Uh, hello and welcome to Spectrum. Uh, my name is Ed Montes, so your host tonight. And uh, what we're looking at tonight, what should the priorities of Ugandan political parties be after taking lessons in the 2011 elections? All political parties that took part in the 2011 elections are back on the drawing board to try and chart the way forward <clears throat> as they seek to either retain or capture power. The ruling NRM party is focusing its energies on recruiting more young people to join the party using their famous yellow box system. But there is a group of people uh, referred to as, as young tax within the NRM who want to see the old guard or all call them historical step aside and create space for these younger people. The opposition, on the other hand, has its own daunting tasks, including setting up grassroots structures, which are viewed as a key pillars in the growth of any political system or party. In some political parties, internal power struggles have already begun, and reports indicate that in the FDC, a rift has emerged after one group suggested that Dr. Chiza Vestige step aside even before his term has expired. Other people argue that the opposition should form a lobby or even a pressure group and start demanding for reforms early enough, long before the 2016 elections, to avoid being caught off guard. Some people are arguing that Uganda is likely to have a more powerful and dominant ruling party for some time, an issue that may derail democracy and the emergence of credible leaders. Political analysts, however, argue that for the better of this country and the young multi-party system, all political parties must begin appreciating the need for internal democracy as well as discipline. So tonight we ask, after taking part in the 2011 elections, what should political parties be focusing on now to be able to get stronger and more popular? Should some political parties, especially those of the opposition, consider electing new leaders who should begin preparing for elective office in 2011? Well, our guests tonight, Mr. Gwada Ogot, political analyst and civil society activist. You're most welcome, Mr. Ogot. Uh, thank you, and good, good, good evening, viewers. We're also joined uh, on the line by Mr. Peter Wamboga Mjiri, a senior journalist. Uh, you're most welcome, Peter. Thank you, Edmond, and good evening, viewers. Uh, Mr. Ogot, looking at the just concluded elections and how each political party performed, what do you think are the implications on uh, each of these political parties? Mm, thank you very much, uh, Edmond, uh, for your question. One, and thank you very much for inviting me here again. Uh, the elections have just been concluded. And uh, at this juncture, we must uh, all say thank you that uh, so far, uh, peace has largely preva prevailed. Um, in a post-election uh, setting, Parties must do various things. There is the immediate issues to be resolved, particularly the post-election issues, which I am sure many of them will be sitting down to resolve and find an agenda upon. Uh, there have been complaints that have been uh, raised across the board in regards to the process and outcome, which I am sure they will take positions on as an immediate issue and uh, as an immediate, immediate agenda towards uh, before they move forward. However. There are other issues that uh, many parties uh, should focus on in an ideal situation post-election. One of them is uh, policy formulation um, and prioritization of policy. Uh, policy. One uh, that would come in uh, in response to what the party believes could have failed it in the last election. Maybe they did not focus on serious policy issues or did not focus or spend enough time on certain issues that would have won them the election. Uh, two, prioritization of the policy. E.g. today you would tell that uh, one of the major issues that will probably occupy uh, Uganda for the next five years will be uh, constitutional review. Uh, I think the ball has been set in course by the uh, National Resistance Movement Organization when uh, they proposed, uh, one of their members proposed to uh, review and extend the term, the term of, a presid of, the, of the presidential term from five to seven years. That really has constitutional ramifications. Um, two, uh, there have been also proposals about uh, the introduction of term limits. That is also has constitutional ramifications. Uh, three, there have been uh, uh, issues, uh, particularly in regard to other issues, policy issues that may focus around things like corruption and uh, solutions to the same, or action against uh, stronger or stiffer action or penalties against those perceived to be corrupt amongst other issues that I'm sure will occupy, but I think constitutional uh, review and corruption will play a major role 
uh, in the unfolding events. Uh, three, parties may also look at reviewing their structures, the structure of their organs, uh, to uh, meet or to be in tandem with the changing times, the changing political times. Uh, probably certain parties may feel or may find themselves in a situation where the structures they had were uh, uh, more sensible in uh, uh, five or ten years ago, but today may need review. And, and when you speak, start talking about constitutional review, uh, the national constitution, this may also uh, apply to internal constitutions of political parties. Yes. Do you need to accommodate more people at certain hierarchy levels? You may have a party president. Do you need to have three vice presidents, two vice presidents? Do you need to have uh, review the, the structure of the ultimate decision-making bodies of the party, amongst things like that? Another is uh, resources. Parties would need to review one uh, resources amongst them. One fund raising uh, is a big issue. Did uh, were most parties able to uh, mobilize uh, well against the finances they had? Were they able to uh, remunerate uh, their energy, uh, their, their, their agents, and other members who had come in or volunteers, probably even with a cup of tea or uh, uh, a, a, a soda? Uh, three. The issue of human resources. Uh, what kind of resources are you looking for? If you have a clear uh, structure that uh, this is what we want and this is how we want to get there. Are you looking for <coughs> specific people with specific uh, abilities? Uh, if your failure was in fundraising, are you looking for people who have fundraising capacity? If your failure was in uh, uh, grassroots networks, are you looking for people who are able to mobilize from the local level without necessarily having been centered from Kampala? I mean, there'd be various qualifications that parties would look for. Uh, so we talk about human resources, we talk about uh, fundraising, amongst other issues that would be key. Three, uh, <clears throat> we also know that uh, the very objective of any political party is the uh, assumption of power. If there is a party that does not believe that uh, its ultimate goal is to get to power, then it has no business there. It is like saying that uh, uh, you uh, you can uh, set up a show, but it's not for the money. It's not for the money. Right. Yes, you know. So power is a key issue. And then uh, when you get down to uh, again policy shifts, I'll give an example. There's there have been a current debate, uh, particularly in regard to the FDC, where certain members have been saying that uh, there needs to be a change in leadership, uh, a new flag bearer amongst other things. But when it gets to issues of policy, are you looking what is the position uh, uh, of the party in regard to this and these issues? Because you develop either a centrist position, a far-left position, and say that we are looking for the best advocate, the best leader who can best amplify this and represent this and iconize it to the people. And then that's the person you're seeking. So... Those are amongst the factors that you would look at in an immediate post-election uh, uh, <coughs> time. All right. Yes. Of course, we'll look at the other elements, mm -hmm. the, 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 the part of the government, the NRM, what kind of changes we, we, we expect to see from that side, and then the individual political parties, mm -hmm. the FDC and others, specifically the FDC, because mm -hmm. it's the more dominant mm -hmm. party. But maybe before we go mm -hmm. <coughs> any further, uh, this seven, the extension, the, the restoration of the term limits, that's mm -hmm. probably, most people think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the seven year term. Is mm -hmm. it a desirable thing in your view? Mm, I have not had, uh, it, it exists, for example, uh, in uh, Rwanda, where, where, where the uh, current president altered his term from a five, the, 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 the ruling party offered the term, altered the term from a five year period to a seven year period. Yes. Um, whether it is good in the short run and bad in the long run, we are yet to tell. But uh, there must be specific reasons. It is in uh, everybody's right, uh, constitutionally enshrined, to give ideas and proposals that you believe may be of benefit to your country. All right. But uh, most of all, it is also good that you explain to the people why you think this is necessary. Right. Is it something that is good for all Ugandans? Or is it something that is good for specific Ugandans? Right. Is it good for all political parties? Or is it good for specific political parties? And if, by any chance, another party was to take over power, would the proposer of this idea still believe that it is the right way to go? Right. I mean, the, any uh, proposals made should also be looked at from uh, the perspective of posterity and uh, universal apl application, not uh, selective. The, I think that needs to be looked at from that man. All right, Peter, I'll ask you the same question. Looking at the just concluded elections and how each political party performed, what yes, do you okay. think are the implications on each of these political players? Well, Edmond, uh, I want to agree with Mr. Gott on a number of areas he has highlighted, 
but also to add that he, first of all we need to look at the history of political parties in Uganda. It's important to appreciate the history where we're coming from in order to understand where we are today and where we are going ahead. Uh, first of all, political parties came about or a political multi-party dispensation came about <coughs> after the referendum in 2000. But when you look back, political parties were suspended for nearly 14 years. Since 1986, there was a ban 